Good evening. Good evening. I have the pleasure of introducing tonight's speaker, William Julius Wilson. After many years at the University of Chicago, training a generation of doctoral students in urban studies and sociology, Dr. Wilson came to Harvard University, where he is the Lewis P. and Linda L. Geiser University Professor, as well as the Director of the Joblessness and Urban Poverty Research Program at the Malcolm Weiner Center for Social Policy at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government. Through his long and illustrious career, Professor Wilson has received more notable awards and honors than I can share with you this evening. A MacArthur Prize Fellow from 1987 to 1992, Wilson has been elected to the National Academy of Science, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the National Academy of Education, the American Philosophical Society, the Institute of Medicine, and the British Academy, to just name a few of a very long list of honors. He is also the past president of the American Sociological Association. Professor Wilson has received 44 honorary degrees, including honorary doctorates from Princeton, Columbia, the University of Pennsylvania, Northwestern, Johns Hopkins, Dartmouth, and the University of the Netherlands in Amsterdam. Professor Wilson is the recipient of the 1998 National Medal of Science, the highest science honor in the United States and was awarded the Talcott Parsons Prize in the Social Sciences by the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 2003. His books include The Declining Significance of Race, The Truly Disadvantaged, When Work Disappears, and most recently, More Than Just Race, Being Black and Poor in the Inner City. Leading tonight's discussion, entitled Race and Affirming Opportunity in the Barack Obama Era, please join me in welcoming Professor William Julius Wilson. According to a 2008 Newsweek poll, nearly three quarters of all Americans disapprove of, quote, giving preferences to blacks and other minorities in things like hiring, promotions, and college admissions. Now this is consistent with an, uh, earlier polls, including a uh, 2003 Times CNN poll, in which a majority of African Americans disapproved of, quote, affirmative action admissions programs at colleges and law schools that give preferences to minority applicants, unquote. Now, to help understand this opposition to racial preferences, as a way to overcome inequality, two factors should be seriously considered, particularly when the focus is on African Americans. The first factor is clearly racial. 
a perception that blacks are responding, that blacks are responsible for their own economic predicament, and therefore undeserving of special government support. Indeed, the idea that the federal government, quote, has a special obligation to help improve the living standards of blacks, unquote, because they have, quote, been discriminated against so long, unquote, was supported by only one in five whites in 2001, and has never exceeded support by more than one in four since 1975. Now, significantly, the lack of white support for this idea is not related to background factors such as level of education and age. The second major factor in the opposition to perceived <coughs> racial preferences is a heavy reliance on individualistic explanations of social behavior and social outcomes in this country. It is, it is an unavoidable fact that Americans tend to de-emphasize the structural origins and social significance of poverty and welfare. Mm -hmm. In other words, the popular view is that people are poor or on welfare because of their own personal shortcomings. And we can easily see that explanations focusing on the character and capabilities of the individual dominate American thinking. Consider studies of national public opinion. On the basis of an analysis of national survey data collected since 1969, James Kugel and Elliot Smith concluded that, quote, most Americans believe that opportunity for economic advancement is widely available, that economic outcomes are determined by individuals' efforts and talents or their lack, and that in general, economic inequality is fair." Unquote. Indeed, responses to questions in these National American Surveys reveal that individual or individualistic explanations for poverty, for example, lack of effort or ability, poor moral character, slack work skills, were overwhelmingly favored over structural explanations, <coughs> such as lack of adequate schooling, low wages, lack of jobs, and so on. The way Americans give to individualistic factors can be seen in their assessment of racial issues. In a 2008 Newsweek poll, 67% of Americans agreed with this statement, quote, blacks who can't get ahead in this country are mostly responsible for their own condition." Unquote. Only 18% felt that, quote, discrimination was the main reason black people can't get ahead these days. 18% agreed with that. Likewise, a recent Pew Research Center survey reported that, quote, fully two-thirds of all Americans believe personal facts rather than racial discrimination, explain why many African Americans have difficulty getting ahead in life. Just 19% blame discrimination. Nearly three quarters of U.S. whites, 71%, a majority of Hispanics, 59%, and even, believe it or not, a slight majority of blacks, 53%, quote, believe that blacks who have not gotten ahead in life are mainly responsible 